Good morning, folks. We've got major weather. Space weather is returning slowly. Top science news at the galactic scale and beyond. Let's begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours were quite calm. Big shark fin coronal hole thinning at the base and spreading at the northern reach. Its solar wind is a few days away, but the smaller one out ahead of him raised intensity at Earth's solar wind stream overnight. That's the rise in solar wind speed. Not much happening in terms of geomagnetism just yet. It is a weak stream. Meanwhile, the focus should be on the big one because we magnetically connected to it last night. Its stream is still on the way. And in terms of interplanetary magnetic fields, the faster stream the last few hours sent the blue phi angle towards the 360 mark, which means we are currently in streaming fields from Earth back to the sun. Meanwhile, the weather continues punishing Houston on holidays. Not only heavy rain, but tornado action and significant wind damage in Louisiana and moving into Mississippi as well this morning. November cleanup. Let's move on to the animations. This one from NASA shows snow cover changes on one of the mountain range segments out west here. Link is for you below. One of the most famous supernovas has an almost 30-year photography history. They are strung together here with a material density concentrating at that ring distance around the stellar remnant. What Hubble is calling a bat shadow, a dark lighthouse effect in the cosmos, they say is going to be caused by a dusty disk where new planets are forming around the star, and which makes that lighthouse shape. Well, they actually caught two of those in that one shot, but if they noticed the second one up there, they didn't say anything. Up next, it's galactic collisions right here in the Milky Way. After watching SO whip around the active galactic nucleus of our Milky Way, the infrared returns show unprecedented motion around the central point. Sadly, those last frames there are just a simulation. At the larger scale in the galaxy, we have enough stars moving in the same direction, but not in the rotating direction of the galaxy, to say that they are part of an ancient collision, possibly the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. This means that a lot of those stars are going to have hyperbolic orbits, which means that dark matter is not needed to explain the rotational dynamics of this galaxy. Now, you might not remember that hyperbolic orbit fact about stars and galaxies, but perhaps you recall the speculation about Bose-Einstein condensates that could be dark matter if they're at large scale in the cosmos. We also tend to think Rydberg polarons could contribute, but alas, the point here is ultra-cold temperatures, atoms, and subatomic pieces of plasma in space. They could produce vast structures across the cosmos like veils, double layers, or filaments, which means the math works from a science perspective, just like they've made it work for dark matter so far. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Our next children's book is out. Conference tickets for February are slowly and sneakily disappearing day by day. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.